Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Hangout with ST. My name is Alyssa. And I'm Rachel. Hangout with ST is a weekly talk show where we bring you the top stories of the week. Mm, and we're down to episode 59 and as you can see, Harinja is not here. So okay. in his place, we have Rachel. Rachel is no stranger to the show. Yeah. You've been here... This is your fourth or fifth time? This is my fourth time. Okay, the next week will be your fifth time because yeah. then I will be away. <laughs> okay, so if you're all wondering where Harinja is, well, I'm not telling you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he said not to tell you yeah. where he is. Okay, and, to, uh, and as always, and as always, we're coming to you live on the Straits Times newsroom. So do leave your comments, uh, and also for Harry, don't just leave it there because I'm pretty sure that he's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> leave it, leave the comments there, and then we'll read it later during the show. Okay, mm -hmm. so for this week's top news, we'll be discussing about Changi Jewel Airport that is open today for the public for preview, and also relooking the term influencer. Mm. And then we'll also touch on the super fungus infection called the Candida auris. And then last but not least, the extreme things that people will do just to avoid spoilers yes. for Game of Thrones and, and Avengers, Avengers Endgame, and Game, mm -hmm. right? And as always, we'll end off with other news in a minute, and then Facebook face off, which you've been winning, right? Um, <laughs> well, right? No, I've just been winning her until when I. I'm on the show, but the last time when I was with you, I lost. Ah, okay, I see. <laughs> so I'm your kryptonite. Yes, you are. Okay, so maybe I still have a good chance of winning you. Today. No, maybe not, not okay. today. <laughs> okay, we'll see, we'll see, alright? Okay, so let's log in to the Facebook thing and then we'll say hi to everybody. This happens all the time. I need to, I need to tell you all that I, have, I haven't logged in yet. Okay, so Darren says hi, gals. <laughs> where is hi, the... Darren. Hello, Darren. Oh, yeah, Hi, where is Yen Tao? <laughs> yes, where is the Yen Tao? Harinto, why don't you reply? I'm pretty sure you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody where you are. Okay, so everyone just saying hi, hi. Hi, Samuel To. Okay. Okay, we say enough highs. Okay. Alright, <laughs> so today's the day. It was a public preview of Jiu Changi Airport. Uh, it's been getting a lot of press. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, not just locally, but internationally as well. Yes, and also our Straits Times colleagues uh, were there today. Mm. Uh, spent a lot of time there. And you know, over the next few days, you'll see about half a million visitors who will go and experience Changi Jo Airport. Yeah, and we're wondering if anyone watching Hangout today managed to score any preview tickets. <laughs> Not from <Yeah>. Carousel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if you have, or if, even if you haven't, you know whether you're excited to, to go check it out. Yes. And what you'll be excited to see. Right. And if this is the first time you're hearing about Changi, uh, Jo Changi Airport, well, I think you've been living under a rock. But don't worry, we have a very quick background yes. there for you. For one, it's 10 stories high. Mm -hmm. It's important because then you know how many of you got to set aside enough time during your transit. Don't try to cover everything in like in a one hour yes, transit, yes. you know. And then also it's connected to terminal two and three via air conditioned travelators. Yeah, and also we know there's a rain vortex, which is an indoor waterfall that is forty meters tall. Today I was told by my colleague that it really looks majestic, and I would want to go and see it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also there's the five story garden with mazes slides. Suspended bridge and bouncing net. Mm. And of course, uh, only Singapore can make an airport a weekend destination, like a mall. So some people are looking and they're saying like, oh, you know, this this is like Marina Bay Sands, mm. looks just like a mall, this one looks like Gardens by the Bay. And I think they're right. It, it's a very nice mesh of one of of two of Singapore's mm. most popular tourist landmarks. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm staying at Pasir Ries because it's so near me. It's about okay. 10 minutes away, I think. Yeah, and I'm also looking forward to the 280 shops, about 280 shops and food restaurants available there. It's food, um, right? It's always food for you. Yeah, it's always food <laughs> for me. I love, so, I love food so much. So, uh, looking forward to New York Burger Chain, Shake Shack, I, I saw today. Um, I haven't tried it. Is that good? Burgers. I have never tried, but their cheeseburger looks so good. And also, they have oh. milkshakes, you know, which is like a very typical American thing to have. Yes. Um, and also a &W that's coming back to Singapore after a decade away, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I know a lot of people I know are excited about a and um, I'm not really that crazy about it because even when I was in Singapore, I didn't eat that much of it. Oh, yeah. I love their root beer flow. I think that's one of my main things to go to for, for a and w And also, mm. I understand now their curly fries as like the option of putting cheese and also, you know, their coney dog that, that kind of like the minced uh, beef. Thing that is on a coney dog, yeah, they have it with the curly fries now. Okay, there you have it. <laughs> w for you, sure. <laughs> okay, but what I'm what, what I'm looking forward to mm. is uh, the Pokemon Center. Mm -hmm. So I like Pokemon, <laughs> uh, and then. Yeah, no, I'm excited to buy a soft toy from there. Okay, <laughs> that's all. I feel that's all I'm excited about, a soft toy. Yeah. And then there's also um, the Yotel 
Yeah. yeah, so this is where you can stay, you can book cabins if you want a short, like if you have a short layover, maybe like mm. minimum of four hours or mm. about four hours, you can just stay over there. And my favorite and your favorite ice cream yeah. brand, Birds of Paradise. Uh, is it our favorite now? I like it too. Yeah, I yeah. love Birds of Paradise. So Birds of Paradise. This is our favorite now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Birds of Paradise has a store in Katong and now they open a bigger store in, in Jewel and looking forward to that when. I can actually go. Mm. Yeah. Of course, uh, if you didn't manage to score the tickets, uh, we didn't manage to get any and we mm. missed the media preview because we were preparing for today's show, <laughs> unfortunately. Don't worry, it will be open to everyone from next Wednesday. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. And also, uh, there are a lot of videos that the video team has done. So today, we did a live video. Our colleague Sam Joe, he was there. So for all these videos, there'll be a walkthrough and then yes. they also cover the Pokemon Center, yes. so on and so forth. Just log on to straightstimes.com or mm -hmm. our Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, let's say hi to some people. So. Okay. So, Ko Guan Chai says A&W. Probably looking forward to A&W. Mm -hmm. Darren Tay is looking forward to Root Beer, which I am too. Mm -hmm. And then Jacqueline Naval Guest says she's viewing this from Hong Kong. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay, we have a viewer who was actually at Jewel today. So Samuel Song says, I was at Jewel today. I got to see it for the... Got to see it first on my birthday too. Oh, happy birthday! Yeah, it's happy the birthday. same day as uh, Harianto. Oh, yeah. So it's his Harianto. birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Harianto. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday, Harianto. <laughs> Harianto. He says, it's very beautiful, especially the Indoor Waterfall, which was mesmerizing. Best airport in the world. So proud to be Singaporean. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Okay, so recently there was a resort owner. Okay, so now on to our next segment. Sorry, <laughs> was that very abrupt? So anyway, recently a resort owner in the Philippines he took to Facebook to complain about freeloading influencers. Mm. Okay, so when he was interviewed, this resort owner who owns uh, the White Banana Beach Club, uh, his name is Mr. Kasakia. He said that he wasn't against real influencers. What and when he was asked about like you know what's the magic number of followers that reflects that an influencer has mm. legit social influence, mm. he said half a million. So he put a number on it. Okay. So does right. the number of followers determine whether you're an influencer? Right. But if it's <laughs> if it's that, if you're going by that metric, then it can't be like it can't be the only metric because now it's not about having so many followers. Mm. The trend now is also using micro, micro influencers. So yeah. Influencers who have <laughs> below uh, 50,000 yeah. followers. Yeah, and I understand macro influencers, uh, they have more than 50,000 followers. So people like uh, Kimberly Wang, which we'll be talking about in a while, uh, mm. is a macro influencer, for example. Mm. Mm. So she has about 128,000 mm. as of today mm. uh, followers on her Instagram. And then Mr. Brown, he actually is a micro. I was quite surprised. I thought yeah. he would be a... Macro. Macro, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he has about 25k followers. So anyway, these two, they were recently tapped by government agencies to promote their campaigns. Mm. Mr. Brown for Budget 2019 and then Kim for a, minis for a Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth campaign. Uh, however, you know, as we were talking about influencers, right, uh, we, we kind of feel like it's not very fair uh, to some influencers who truly deserve the word. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about what we think an influencer should be. Yeah, like re-looking the, the term, re-looking at, at, at the definition. Because mm. I think a lot of people, um, they do have different ideas of what an influencer is mm. or should be. So why is it to you? <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Okay, <laughs> okay so to me, right, um, I'm being very idealistic here and it's really just my personal opinion, okay? Mm. So don't bash me for it. Uh, for me, influencers are people who affect change and they don't draw so much attention to themselves but direct the attention to social causes, to, to other things bigger than themselves. Mm. Yeah. So, so one, one example okay. for me would be um, the Razor Chief Executive Officer, Min Liang Tan. Mm -hmm. So he, he obviously revolutionized the, the gaming laptop industry. And he also uses uh, his, because he's, he's pretty good on social media, he's quite charismatic <laughs> and relatable. And he uses that, uh, his platform, to talk about things that matter. And he also uses his influence to to get attention. So you know when um, uh, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, he talked about going cashless mm. system in Singapore, mm -hmm. he actually volunteered and, and, and you know put himself out there. Oh, and he's wow. also part of the Research Innovation Enterprise Council of Singapore where you know they're involved in strategies and thinking about mm. 
and like what the name says, like research <laughs> and stuff for Singapore. And you were also talking about Pretty Nair, who, who goes by yeah. Pretty Please, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you loved her. Yes, so I still love her. Yeah, you <laughs> Not past that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I find that she's unafraid to give like her quite tongue in cheek take on social issues. And mm. even sometimes when you know it's like a paid advertorial or you know, you, you know that there's like yeah. other brands involved, like she she's not afraid to be herself. She's not just saying something just because she's being paid to say it. Yeah, and yeah. beyond that, I've been enjoying her rap music videos where oh. she um, kind of like talks about the stigma that minority communities face in Singapore and also some videos, very very interestingly, she talks, uh, she represents like her Indian culture in them. So mm. I really appreciate those kind of music videos from her. Yeah, and well. it's good, right? So it's it's like she is she knows that she gets the attention, but rather than mm. saying that oh I'm like so awesome, yeah I carry, I'm so cool, yes. she kind of uses it as a platform for other issues. Yes. Yeah, so I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, we have a lot. Yeah, they a lot of talking. Uh, what are some qualities you think that influencers should have? For lack of a better word, I mean mm. it's just a very general term now. Okay, so for me, um, when I think of influencers, I think of obviously people who can influence uh, my mindset or change my mindset on something. So for me, I look to uh, people who are relatable and also people who I aspire to be. So for example, uh, this YouTuber, her name is Ashley, also known as Best Dress on Instagram. Uh, she has 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube. To me, she is funny, she's witty, um, she's my style icon. And beyond that, she's not afraid to appear vulnerable and clumsy in front of the camera, even though she puts herself, uh, puts a very perfect image in front of the camera. So beyond that also, like, um, other influencers are people who encourage me to live a better life, I guess. So mm. those are the kinds that I would call influencers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually this is our, our very uh, crunch down debate. Yesterday we, we talked about <laughs> this for a very long time and yes. I think we couldn't see eye to eye on a lot of things about influencers. But hey, we're still friends. We're <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. still <laughs> hosting the show together. Yep. Okay, so <laughs> now on the flip side, because I was saying that uh, I, I feel that some people like don't deserve the term influencers, mm. right? So to make myself clear, I think in this case it's people who just kind of just take nice photos. I mean the photos are nice, uh, but they just tend to be selfies of themselves. And yeah some cleavage, you know, and then <laughs> just for the product with some cleavage and then they just like, just mm. spit out a very bad, badly written press release, like, mm. I, I... <sighs> I think in short, Alyssa wants someone who is trustworthy, right, to be an influencer. I, I, mean, I mean, they're influencers for everybody, mm. right? I mean, for some people, they, they like those sort and it's and it's fine. Yeah. But I, I, maybe we should just kind of relook the term influencer. Like, so okay. in the industry now, they're trying to use another term because um, most people, most or some mm. sometimes use the term influencer in jest. Like, oh, like, oh you influencer, ah, you, think you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So now agencies, they tend to, they use another term called key opinion leaders. Mm. People who, you know, inspire change and actually like... Have opinions on things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, this is debatable uh, because obviously some lifestyle influencers don't really have much opinions on, you know, most things, but... I hope they differentiate that if they use the term key opinion leader and influencer. Mm, and sometimes mm. like uh, they don't seem to be a good fit with whatever campaign they're on. Yes. So that's why I feel that for Mr. Brown for Budget 2019, I think it makes a lot of sense because mm. he's always been commenting for the longest time on social issues, Singapore's like current affairs. Um, a much better fit compared to last year, some... They, micro they hired, yeah, they hired yeah. micro-influencers and then they, they got it all wrong. Yes, the one that you mentioned, someone said... Um, they called the Ministry of Finance, <laughs> Singapore Government of Finance. <laughs> yeah, just small things like that. You mm, know? Yes, so for me, I think in the future, I think uh, campaigns, uh, brands and also government agencies should look at um, the influencer and see how they can represent the message that you want to bring across. Maybe be more um, discerning as well, Yes, right? correct. Yeah, so I mean, let, let us know your thoughts, if any, if you have any comments, any opinions at all, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, Darren Tay says, those are Instagrammer, not influencers. Is that, what's the difference though? I mean, it's just the platform that they use, yeah, right? but they still call themselves influencers. Yeah, they all <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Helen C says, hello, hi, hello, hi. Oh, Noradin, <laughs> Madi already fell asleep, poor thing. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just when you thought the flu season couldn't get any worse, there's now a dangerous fungus infection floating around the world and it's called the Candida auris or known as C. auris. So before, um, Headlines has said that this super fungus kills nearly half of its victims in 90 days. But before we panic, here are four things that you should know about it.
So for the full video, you can check it out on Straits Times Facebook page or even our StraitsTimes.com. Mm. So the Ministry of Health uh, said there has been 11 known cases in Singapore of the yeah of the cases in Singapore since 2012, and since news broke, uh, people have been you know, the internet has been like mm, in a state, state of panic. panic yeah, because yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be afraid to know that there's a virus or infections that can't be cured with drugs, right? Yeah, yeah, and I understand. I mean, when I first heard of it, I immediately thought like you know it's the end of the world, <laughs> and this kind of really brings me back to um, the first time media outlets talked about bird flu or the H5N1 virus. And it's still happening up to today, even though there's a cure. Um, just last year, in 2018, there have been cases reported in Malaysia. Mm. Mm. Okay, so uh, for now, I think it's quite okay in Singapore. So just some general housekeeping rules uh, before we like just run away and get, pan and get panicked. Uh, mm. Just remember to keep your hands clean, practice good hygiene. Um, and mm. if you're sick, please go see a doctor. And take an MC. Please don't come to office and spread it to your colleagues. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on a lighter note, I'm sure many Singaporeans are looking forward to the Easter break that's happening next Friday. But before that, there are one exciting thing that's going to happen next Tuesday, which is the Game of Thrones premiere uh, on April 15th. And then mm. the week after that would be the Avengers Endgame premiering on April 24th. Mm, mm. Okay, so I think Game of Thrones will be out next Monday. Next Monday, not Tuesday. Oh, but anyway, sorry. but anyway, it's okay. Yeah. Well, of course, no mm. one wants spoilers to Avengers Endgame, and clearly, people have been doing extreme things to avoid those at all costs. And I think um, probably the the whole reason why there's this uproar is because people want they, they don't want people to spoil it. Like, who's going to die? Because mm. apparently, an Avenger is supposed to die, right? I'm not sure whether it's one. At least one. Yeah, at least one say. will die. Yeah. Yeah. So it was quite crazy. So tickets for the sh movie went on sale on April 10th. Which was yesterday. 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 Yes. yes. And then on uh, before the cinemas opened, people were already queuing outside. Yeah, and right. there were crashes even online for most of the major cinema outlets. Yeah, and also. Um, and GV sold out. Okay, yeah, they said GV they had sold, out. sold over fifteen thousand tickets in the first hour, and this is the highest they've ever sold in advance for a single movie. Yeah. Now, if you're not one of the lucky 15,000 who managed to get a ticket, yeah. don't worry, you can go always carousel. go on carousel. <laughs> I mean, like, that's what scalpers are for, right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there are some carousellers. I looked at carousel today because I was feeling a bit insecure, a bit kiasu that I wanted, maybe I should watch the movie on the day itself. So you don't like spoilers as well? I actually don't mind me, spoilers. Oh, me and Yan also don't mind spoilers. <laughs> I yeah. don't mind spoilers, but I felt like, oh my god, if everyone's jumping on the I don't want spoilers game, maybe I should too. Also, you FOMO la. Yeah, I like, was still <laughs> missing out. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, there were people selling from a range of like $13 to up to hundreds, and there's this um, carouseller that was selling it for $888. Which I think you should not buy because it is so not worth it. You could take a trip to Korea or Japan and it hey, would be so much better. But you never know, you know. What is, <laughs> I'll be very curious to find out if anyone buys it and who will buy it. Actually, a lot of commentators were bashing him for, you know, for selling it for such a high price. Yeah, I'm guessing right that this person who bought the tickets, actually, like, <laughs> it's okay if no one buys it for $888. He but or she try, will just yeah. watch the movie anyway. Yeah. And then they're probably just like trying their luck and just like putting this exorbitant sum yeah. of money. Yeah. Right, so another thing that uh, people don't want spoiled is of course Game of Thrones. So mm -hmm. Game of Thrones is entering its last season. Mm -hmm. There's only six episodes and uh, of course, you know, if you don't want to know any spoilers, our tech colleague Itye has some advice for you. Extension on Google Chrome called Game of Spoils. So let's check it out. So you just click on Game of Spoils Google Chrome extension and let's add it to Chrome. And then what we do is we just check that it's turned on. So if you click here, you can see it's on, it's enabled. All right, okay. So after you've checked that it's turned on, what we do is you can just go on, for example, if I go on Facebook, um, the Game of Thrones Facebook page. Aha, see? Um, do you see on the screen here? So for example, anything that has potential spoilers, so I think they pick up keywords, for example, Game of Thrones and, um, you know, Game of Thrones related words like Westeros and Winterfell. Um, and what they do is they blacken it out completely. Yeah, so the interesting thing about uh, this Google Chrome extension blocker is that it also allows you to view the spoilers if you really wanted to. You just have to click it and then they'll tell you, do you want to view this spoiler? And you say, okay, yeah. 
Then that means you wouldn't be a true fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? I'm sure people are excited. I will be excited. Mm. So the Street Science will be joining in the fun and they'll be posting a series of podcasts after each episode on Monday. And this podcast series is called Join the Watch. And uh, mm. every week there's like a roster of different colleagues. Oh, look, Harianto is there again. Yeah, it's like, Harianto. you know, even when he's not here, he's still here. Yeah, if you like miss his, his voice, just go on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not only just an audio podcast, they will also be doing a video podcast. So mm. when they're watching the show, they will be videoed so that you can like see their reactions. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they will ham it up for the camera. So it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> and the first episode is already out. Um, they, they actually talk about the best and worst moments from season one to seven. And around 17 minutes I understand they have all these like wildest theories on what will be coming up next. and that's the fun thing right all yeah. these like fan theories it's, it's very fun to watch right <laughs> yes. uh, okay so as, a, as we mentioned it's called join the watch and you can find it here so we've got links below it'll mm -hmm. be on Spotify Instagram and also on Google podcast do we have yes we have it here screenshot okay okay now for other news in a minute Onyam is other news in a minute. In one minute, we'll crunch down the other headlines of the week. Mm. And for our first headline, this one, air taxis from German aviation startup Volocopter aims to begin their test flights in Singapore in the third quarter of the year. The machines will be able to complete their mission and arrive at their destination owing to a design that has multiple com components that will run independently. So don't worry if something just stops and then you, you know. <laughs> it's not a drone. Mm. It's an air taxi, right? Okay, so the sixth and final stage of this circle line will cost $4.85 billion, more than half the total cost of the first five stages of the orbital MRT line. Responding to queries from the Straits Times, the Land Transport Authority attributed the rising cost to inflation and the challenge to integrate the new stretch to the first five stages, which are already in operation. For our last headline, a housing board flat owner who had converted the doorstep of his property into a fish tank for his koi has failed in his appeal to keep the structure. A HDB spokesman said that the stairway area outside the unit is common property and that any fixed installations by flat owners have to be confined within the premises of their unit. That's all we have for ONM this week and now for Facebook Face Off. <laughs> So of course, anything's on the light note is Facebook face off. Yes. Uh, Rachel okay. has been winning. Hurry on, No, but I've been losing to you. Is it? Okay, we'll see whether <laughs> I can maintain my lucky streak. So new fans, please vote for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so she's made her plea already. Yeah. Okay. Without further ado, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Okay. So round one, I'll I'll go first. Okay. Okay. So this one is the air taxi story that you know they will start trials in Singapore very soon, and it's called the Volocopter, right? Vishup Sethi says, I read it as Velociraptor initially and got confused. Actually, it's not that funny anymore, but it was it's so funny when I read it. <laughs> okay, clearly, like, she doesn't no, I, I get it. She's I get not it. impressed. <laughs> no, actually, at first I was like, I think this is a dinosaur, and then I googled it. The Volocopter? No, the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I was like, oh, it's a long tail one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So I rather have, like, Harrington's contagious laugh. It's okay, he's irreplaceable. <laughs> I just got, she just threw shit at me. I didn't, I didn't, his laugh is irreplaceable, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh my, okay, whoa, 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 okay, peace. This is like the diplomatic okay. handshake. Peace. <laughs> okay, so mine is the about the Avengers Endgame tickets going up on sale and, um, you know, it crashing the cinema sites. Chi Hao Ni says, it's just a moody movie. Whether you watch it now or two weeks later, the ending will be the same. Yeah, but I mean like, <laughs> sure, sure, Chi Hao. Yeah, I'm just like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my ha ha is like, ha ha. Like, <laughs> like, true that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so round, okay. So if, oh yes! My gosh, sorry. We didn't explain how this game works. So if you think mm. that, <laughs> the joke that Rachel picked is funnier, yeah? you type in R in the comment section. Mm, if and you if think, you think Alyssa is funnier, just type in A. Mm. Okay, yeah. there you have it. Okay, then we'll see who wins. R is like easier to access on the keyboard. Okay, round two is your <laughs> Round two Okay, is okay. So this man uh, was scammed minutes after ignoring advisory on credit for sex scams. Lim Minyi says he's thinking with the wrong head. 
Okay, so uh, <laughs> Hangout at ST has a R18, M18 <laughs> for this week's episode. Yeah, I so shall we, not explain yeah, this joke, but you get it. Oh, you know, because we want to keep the PG-13 rating, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So we will not explain this joke. <laughs> but it's a good joke. Okay, so <laughs> my headline that I, ch- that I chose, a bull, the bull, escapes from Min Chu Kang Dairy Farm. I said the bull because everyone knows who the bull is now, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then I think the Straits Times caption was quite funny. They said bull on the move. Okay, but that's not a joke. Okay, so I chose one from Vidya Guna Shagan. She says, when does the internship end? It's funny because the people keep thinking that the person who writes this caption oh, is an intern. They keep thinking that it's an right. intern job, but it's not. It's like full-time people, full-time employees. And very this. talented like partners, right? Yeah, well, it's really not easy. And... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, social media is a full-time job. They're social media specialists. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought that was funny. La. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, if you thought Rachel's joke was funny, you type in R. If you think Alyssa is funny, type in A. Oh, there you have it. Okay, and final round is the designing factor. Okay. Although I don't know where we are standing now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay, this one I, I go again, huh? Okay. Okay, so a British woman was detained in Dubai for calling her ex-husband's wife a horse on Facebook. Oof. Okay, that's not a joke, but that was funny too. Okay, so I got a few comments here. So Stephen Leong says, oh, she's a nightmare. And Daniel Tan says, she's a naysayer. And then Dominic Chong says like, Stop horsing around, please. Oh my god. I thought the, these three <laughs> people are awesome. I think so Singaporeans are really good at puns. You think so? Yeah. Oh. I've seen a lot of puns lately. Yeah, which is good. why my next one is a pun too. Okay, got it. <laughs> Let's see. So for this one, Singapore bull run, same thing, but a story about how other animals like panther, hippo and other famous animal escapees over the years. Dominic Leong says, Looks like Lim Chu Kang needs to beef up their security. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> not bad, not bad. It's good. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Just that I don't want to laugh too much at your joke. Oh, because I don't want to sway the votes oh. to your side. I already know you will have one voter with you already. Is it? Yeah. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say who it is. Okay, so let's see who is uh, winning. Uh, okay, so some, I see some, it looks quite evenly split. Mm. Actually. So, but Darren needs to make up his mind. Darren Tay says A, A or R. R. Yeah, you, you, you kind of gotta decide. <laughs> yeah, okay, and then we have Simon Wong, round 1 A, <laughs> round 2 R, round 3 A. Anyone else? Any more votes? Come on, come on, friends, watching. Yeah, Please should we give maybe, like, maybe <laughs> like 5 more seconds or something? No, 5 is too short. Okay, so we call it now. <laughs> okay, sure. No. So maybe... <laughs> no, we should read comments, then we come back. Okay. Ken. Uh, Darren Tay, the bull go meet Yan The bull go go what? How do you know where the, yen, where the Yan Tao is? Oh. So I'm assuming that Darren Tay is referring to Haryanto as the oh. Yan Tao. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't see any other comments. Uh. That's why I, I said we should just call it already. Okay. <laughs> okay. So maybe we'll have the producer, <laughs> our director, tell us um, who the winner is for today. Mm. And then we'll count. Okay, it's a tie! Oh, it's a tie. We need one more comment, please, Oh, no, no trophy because it's not a definite win. Ah, yeah. There you go, it's a tie, but better luck next week. No, that means... Okay, I mean, we're both winners, but that means... I, I don't see that way. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try a lot of shit at me? <laughs> I'm not trying shit at you! <laughs> goodbye, oh my Alyssa. gosh, I don't know whether you're being too sensitive goodbye, or not. <laughs> goodbye, I'm waiting for Harrington to come back to host with me. Okay, there you heard it. Now she's throwing shit at me. Alright, okay, but thank you so much guys for joining thank us. You. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to leave your comments with Ellie. We'll come back to look at it. Mm. Uh, once again, she's Rachel. And she's Alyssa. Mm-hmm. And we're also on social media. We're yeah, on Instagram, like Twitter and YouTube. Yes, correct. Okay, so, so goodbye, goodbye and night. see you next week.